Hi friends, welcome back to another episode of Fix This House. On today's episode, I'm going to be showing you how to fix this huge gap from my door jam. I've just recently installed new flooring, so stay tuned for this fix. Once again, friends, thank you so much for tuning in. If you're new to the channel, please consider pressing the subscribe and notification bell so you can always be in tune on DIYs, how-to videos, and product reviews that I do within this channel. So if you've been tuning into my channel and you've seen the past videos, you can see that I've just finished remodeling my guest bathroom. And right when I took off my old flooring, it actually left about an inch of gap on my door jam and you can see that the new flooring that i installed is a lot thinner than the old stuff that i took out and this what's what's left is about an inch of gap on my door jam and what and also it's showing on the other side so on this one you gotta first start off by measuring what difference that you have so i've been doing a lot of remodeling around the house so i was lucky enough to save this piece of door jam from my past projects but luckily this is actually the same measurement as the one that i need which is four and a half but unfortunately the middle part is a lot bigger than what i actually need so i'll be showing you how to trim that down because this one is about a quarter inch um, bigger so we'll have to trim that out later on and I'll show you a quick tip and trick to do that so if you put it right against the old one you can see that there is a gap of about a, a quarter inch so what you want to do is start off with a clean edge so with my old door jam I'm just gonna cut off the ugly edge you can see that there's still staples on that end and yeah if you don't have a door jam extra piece like this just use regular plywood and just measure up the sizes that you need like for this one I'm gonna be cutting about an inch and then I'm gonna because that's about the gap that I need and actually I'm gonna make this a little bit about the same fit so that it'll have that nice tight squeeze now what are the tool that I'm using here is the works oscillating tool I highly recommend that you get one of these tools because this will make your job a lot easier and you'll you'll see in a little bit why this tool is so important for this project to get those fine details that we'll be using later so I'm going to be using some cardboard for a down piece right here so that I can protect my floor and I'm just going to remove that little tiny um, little tiny piece of wood that's stuck onto the old piece right there so we can just have that straight piece of wood as you can see that oscillating tool just cuts through that like butter now you have the new piece right here now what we're going to do is we're going to test fit it onto the old stuff right there and you can see that it just has that nice snug fit and actually if you get your um, rubber mallet and tap it in you can easily fit it in through there and using a tapping block which I'm using the old piece just gently tap it in to make it fit so the thing with this is right when you tap onto the wood there's still some empty voids that doesn't quite make it so that it doesn't sit flush so what I'm going to be using is I actually bought some shims if you have extra pieces of wood use these shims to actually tuck it in between that piece so that it will sit straight flush just cut it into little tiny pieces it's totally up to you make it custom the way you want it just make sure that when you stuff it at the back like what you see here and you put the new piece on it will sit flush so in this part um, I kind of cut it a little short wish I cut it a little higher but it's fine this should work just okay and then we're gonna reposition the new block onto that piece use your rubber mallet so you don't damage the piece and then use a little piece of wood for a tapping block to make it go in place and there you have it it finally sits flush on the right side anyways but there's still a little bit of gap on the left side so i'm just going to squeeze in a, a little tiny piece of shim right behind there so that it will be nice and flush there you have it we're going to sneak in that little tiny piece of shim and then we're going to tap it back in and voila there you have it it should be nice and flush now this little tiny piece um, is a little trickier um, we're gonna actually cut out a little bit just to make it flush so what the trick of this is actually roll it around just like what you saw there and then draw the excess um, off so that you know where to be where you're gonna be making that cut so in this case I'm just gonna be tracing around the excess right there and then I'm gonna shade it in so that I know which part to cut so I don't confuse myself because that's happened to me before where I actually cut the wrong side and you don't want that now I'm using my channel lock pliers now this is a very small piece so using my channel lock pliers actually helps me get a better grip onto this while I'm using my oscillating tool because you don't want to be you holding this with your bare hands and the oscillating tool misses and you're going to end up cutting your hands 
so it's better to use um, some type of some type of tool to grip this small piece uh, it doesn't really necessarily have to be a channel lock plier you can use um, any type of tool that you wish to use just so you can hold this in place so that it doesn't hit your hand and as you can see I love the oscillating tool this is a must for this project so that it can cut right through and you can see it cuts real nice again all the tools that I use on this project I'll leave it in the description down below to make it easier for you to find those tools that I used on this video it's a little too short once again so no problem I'll just stuff a little bit of shim right back there um, and then we should be ready to nail it down so the nailer that I'm using today is tack life and I'm using two inch brad nails very easy to use this is air uh, this is an air compressed tool and uh, it's gonna be my go-to every time now this tool is air powered again I'm using about a pancake air compressor and a quarter inch hose now the first thing that you'll need to do first before doing the small one is actually stapling the bigger piece first and then just carefully do each side be careful this is a small piece and there's a tendency that it could crack on you so just be very careful especially when using a brad nailer now put on the shim and then put on the small piece and then we're gonna nail it down and then what I'm gonna be using is actually my square this will help me align it better and I'm using it to press against with my nailer and there you have it, it helps it hold in place now everything is nice and sturdy there is a tiny gap right there but we know we're gonna fill that in later on with some um, wood filler so no worries about that if you end up with a gap now the same thing we're going to do the same thing on the other side just repeat the process that we went before this one i'm going to add a little extra on the middle with a nail and then we're going to nail it down once again using my square in place and then nail it down perfect now the wood filler that i'm using today is a little overkill i have a bunch right now so i might as well use it a uh, brand new as well and i'm using my putty knife and a piece of cardboard you don't need much to do this and just apply it um, around the gaps again when you're using wood filler uh, make sure that you build a little bit over it so that when you start sanding you can actually start feathering it and it'll start um, actually have a nice feather around when you start sanding so again make sure you focus on the edges uh, really well because those are the ones that you want to try to round off with your sandpaper which I'll show you in a bit and this one I am just using some wood filler once again to fill on those tiny little holes again it might look messy now but once you start sanding and get this paint over it it'll, you can barely even notice it plus this stuff is located right below your footing I, I don't think most of your guests that are visiting you is gonna pay cl very close attention to this anyways but you always want to try to do your best now I'm using my sandpaper I'm using 120 grit and I'm having this I actually have this sponge backing again Again, I'll leave this all in the description down below and make sure that you focus on the edges uh, focus on those rounded edge because that's what uh, if you have a rounded edge like that make sure you focus real well on that and take your time when you are sanding and yeah this is actually very um, relaxing and if you don't want to use that block just use it by hand and then you can just vacuum off all the dust that is around there and make sure that you do a good wipe down I'm using a damp rag to take off all the dust so that when we start painting nothing will all the when we start painting the paint will actually stick a lot better now use your masking tape just mask around no brainer right here just make sure you do a really good um, masking job and then I don't have a brush at the moment and all I had was this roller so pardon me I, I wish I had a brush but I had to use what I have and then I'm just actually just rolling the white paint over it and there you have it this is actually I'm only going to be showing you the first coat but I highly suggest that you run this with the first coat and if you see any imperfections run it with another uh, wood filler or you can use caulking to fill in the tiny little defects just like the nail holes which I'll do in a little bit but after the you do the third coat this is actually just the first coat I just want to show you a good example of it and then there you have it just take off carefully all the masking tape and again once this dries again I'm gonna go over it again with another coat of paint and possibly some caulking to fill on those little holes and then just fine-tune it make sure that you take off the masking tape right away while this paint is still wet so you have time to clean it off so there you have it friends I hope you found this video helpful if you did please smash that thumbs up please subscribe 
and make sure that you turn on that notification bell so you can always be in tune on DIYs, how-to videos, and product reviews that I do within this channel. I'll see you next time.